Hello there, metalheads, and welcome to another episode of Metal Verbalizer's podcast. This time we will visit our brothers in East, the home of Lordi and Battle Beast. And uh, of course, today's band, Rust and Rage. The idea for the band started back in 2009, but the official start for the band was back in 2010. And uh, the band originated from Pori in uh, Finland. And uh, well, during this time, Uh, for the band. They created a lot of great ideas when it comes to music and uh, they also recorded a few demos and uh, after a while it was time to record their first album which uh, later was released in uh, 2013. And uh, during this period the band uh, was a five-piece band but uh, that is something that has changed during the years and uh, now they are a four-piece band. Something that I love and hate at the same time with this band is uh, that it's quite hard to put the band in a pat- particular category. Uh, it being so hard shows that the band has gone for a tested and very much liked sound, but uh, put their own spin on it, uh, if I would say so. And uh, I would not really say that it is one sound uh, that they are, are inspired of, Uh, I can hear a lot of different things put into one sound. And to mention a few examples, in some songs I get some serious ghost vibes, especially from the backup vocals, together with the main vocals, which, especially in their latest album, isn't that much of a gritty and uh, distorted vocal. It's more of a clean, but... uh, really good vocals that cuts through the mix. Um, But yeah, then in uh, one song called Heartbreaker, we got some series like David Lee Roth style screams, at least in the chorus. And uh, David Lee Roth is the first one I, that came to my mind, at least. Uh, In my opinion, uh, a lot of the later stuff is uh, more similar to Ghost, like I mentioned. Uh, maybe just a little bit heavier, so it's not really a ghost copy, uh, but we got some ghost flavor in in there. Uh, so if you like ghost, then I think that uh, you might really like Rust and Rage. And something that I really like is that they use organ in some of some of their music. Uh, it gives it a different feel from the regular synths that we usually hear in this sleaze rock, hair, metal, uh, that type of a genre. The use of organs like this is something that us verbalizers has heard before in a band that we have talked about back in season one. And uh, that was uh, Tobbe Englund, which uh, has a lot of organs in his type of a sound. Another thing that I like with uh, the sound is that uh, you get a ton of dynamic feels in uh, the songs. One example of this is that in several occasions they have a very slow and clean intro and this makes it so that when everything kicks into overdrive it is like getting slapped in the face. Something that I personally like to do when writing these episodes is to imagine the band playing on the on the big stages and uh, the bigger the sound of the band is the easier it is to picture the band on like a big stadium show, and uh, in my opinion, Rust and Rage has a gigantic sound, especially in their latest album, actually, and uh, that was released uh, last year. To talk a little bit about the future for the band, it seems like uh, they are absolute machines when it comes to music, because in an interview on YouTube with the singer Vince, and not Vince Neil, uh, this is another Vince, We can actually hear him say that uh, they have already made demos for a potential next album. So if we are very lucky, they start the actual recording for another album very, very soon. And this is actually great news, uh, if you ask me, since uh, the latest album was uh, a great success and has received great reviews pretty much all over. 
if you want to watch this interview, which I think you should, uh, it can be found uh, linked on their Facebook page and probably on their other social media as well. But I'm a young boomer, so I still use Facebook. Now I think it is time to talk about the actual music that the band has put out. So uh, let's begin with their debut album. It was released back in 2013, like I mentioned before, and uh, was called Showdown. Then we had to wait until 2018, which was uh, when the next album was released. And uh, this one is called Tales from the Wasteland. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to listen to these two albums, so I am unable to give an honest review on them, which kind of sucks a bit. But uh, that's just how it is. What I can give a review on, though, is the single that they released in 2017 called Take It Off. This is one that sticks out a bit from the other music that I've heard from the band in uh, two main ways, in my opinion. Firstly, we don't have any synths in this song. Uh, it's just drums, guitars, bass, and a hell of a singer, in my opinion. Uh, secondly, we have a female singer uh, that works together with uh, the regular singer. And uh, this really gives the song a vibe that I really like. Later in 2018, we get a single called Dreamcatcher. Here they have included an acoustic guitar, which uh, gives it that dynamic that I was talking about before, where they maybe start acoustic, uh, and then you get slapped in the face by all of the g bigger guitars and that stuff. Now we have reached 2019, and uh, here we get uh, not one, but two singles actually. First one is called Don't Save My Soul. Here we start to hear the sound that uh, they have in the big album that is to come in a few years from this point. And uh, the second single that was released is called DOA. And the name is short for, as I understand it, Dead or Alive, which we hear them sing in the chords. Now we have reached 2021. And here we have an absolute banger of a single release called Heartbreaker. This is one of my favorites from the band, uh, actually. And uh, here we can also start hearing them sneak in some synths and uh, that sort of stuff, which is uh, one of the things that gives the sound the, that humongous feel. And uh, this is one of those stadium-sized songs uh, where you can easily picture this huge audience and pyrotechnics and stuff. Love it. Now, Metalheads, we have reached 2022, where we are treated with two singles called The Future is for the Strong and Prisoner, together with a full-length album called One for the Road. In the album, you will find two singles, including the single from 2021 called Heartbreaker, but uh, you will also find songs like Ghost Town and uh, the title track One for the Road. This was most of uh, what the band has released considering uh, music. Of course the latest album has uh, more songs for you to check out and I would seriously recommend you to do so. Since we have gone through their releases, it is time for my little segment that I like to call Eric's Top 5. This is going to be a little list of songs that uh, have spoken to me maybe a little bit extra. And uh, on number 1 we got Heartbreaker from One for the Road. Number 2, Ghost Town, from, also from One for the Road. Number 3, Prisoner, from One for the Road. Number four, I've Had Enough, from One for the Road. Number five, Take It Off, which was the first single that we talked about from 2017. This was like my top five. I could have made a bigger list because it was a bit hard to limit the list to just five. And for me personally, I can't wait to see what is going to happen next for the band. And as far as I understand it, 
they are constantly writing new material and it seems like they are trying to keep a steady flow of shows for us to go to and experience this live. Like in their earlier years, I know that they did a, a small tour in Scandinavia with Finland, Sweden, uh, then I think it was uh, Lithuania and um, Estonia. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, I know that in these countries they did a small tour, which would have been awesome to go and see. And uh, But with that said, I think it's time to wrap things up. My question to you now is if this band sounds like something for you. Uh, either way, I would say that uh, you should absolutely give them a chance, because I'm sure that you will find something that you like. And if you happen to like the band, make sure to follow them on their social medias, because except buying music and merch, that is the absolute best way today to support the band and really give them exposure to more, more people. And if you happen to like what we are doing here on Metal Verbalizer's podcast, bringing you new great metal to rock out to. Make sure to give us a follow as well, over on our socials. Over on our socials you can discuss about the bands and give us tips about uh, new bands to verbalize. And uh, if you give us tips, maybe you are the one that gets us uh, the next band to verbalize. Anyways, thank you for listening. I've been Erik, and you've been listening to Metal Verbalizer's podcast, Verbalizing the Band Rust and Rage.